hey, guess what? It let me in. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i love this job <laughs> well now that i'm actually in there broadcasting at least i don't have to worry about um any kind of copyright infringement on that one. <laughs> oh my lord i changed it in you know where i log in on spreaker but i sure as hell didn't change it in sam Wow, what a total dork. <laughs> okay, well, guess what? It is a Freaker Friday, and you're listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also, now, finally, that I put the new password in on the RLM Spreaker channel, and I guess, according to Grimm, I'm uh, also going out on iHeartRadio. Are all of the guys going out on iHeartRadio, or is it just me? It's kind of scary if it's just me. I don't know if I want to... <laughs> Oh, man. Anybody taking any bets on how long that's going to last? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking probably the first show where I drop several F-bombs, and it's go they're going to say, I'm sorry, but you have <clears throat> violated our community, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Some, in other words, somebody's going to get an emotional boo-boo, massive butt hurt going on, and they're going to say, no, you guys can't play nice with others, so therefore... You do not get to play. Aw, oh, darn it all. Okay, yeah, we're also on uh, rlmradio.xyz and the RLM TuneIn radio station, the RLM Internet radio station, later to be on RLM YouTube channel and the RLM BitChute channel. So, yeah, lots and lots of places for you to be able to listen to me go, holy crap, Grim, guess what I did? <laughs> I am such an overachiever sometimes. It's just that, you know, it's not, being an overachiever isn't always a good thing. You know, especially when you have moments like this where you overachieve it, totally flubbing up. <laughs> well, guess what, peeps? I'm ooming. To air is human. Um, oh, it happens after the show? Cool beans. Um, oh, sweet. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Hal Freakers and me. Woo, it's a trifecta. <laughs> you got the brains, you got the you got the well, whatever you and Moosey do. I I you got brains and brawn and and comedy and all that fun stuff and then you got me. I am the comic relief. I will own that. I will own that. Um yeah. <laughs> Oh, how funny. I uh, wound up having to um, say goodbye to Vivaldi, too. It was just giving me too many glitches, and I went back to opera, and you know what? Opera's working great now. So, oh, it's duck season where I be Don C is. Cool. Lots of rain for the ducks. Quack, quack, waddle, waddle, quack, quack, waddle, waddle. We are nipper sinkers. We're in luck. If it rains all week, we can quack like a duck. Quack, quack, waddle, waddle, quack, quack, waddle, waddle. <laughs> It is a Freaker Friday. Yes, it is. Okay, let's see. Over here on Twitter, thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out and all of the other places. And especially thank you out there to Blackbird9. Hun, you know, we really do need to have a chit-chat sometime. Just because it's been forever. Forever. Uh, let me see. I have also lost, I gained quite a few stalkers. Um over the last week or so, I actually even had someone that said that they were Jimmy Buffett who was messaging me. And I'm thinking, mm. So, you know, I, I chit-chatted along for a while until that, that funny little itch you get in your gut, you know, that, that tells you something just ain't quite kosher here. Yeah, until that really got to itching bad and I just plain couldn't scratch it. You know, it's one of them Billy Connolly itches where you could stick you. Well, we'll just move right along. But, um, yeah. Something just didn't feel right, so I went, okay, I'm done now. I'm done playing. You just, and if it is the really, real Jimmy Buffett, dude, I'm a parrot head. Honest to God, but, you know, it kind of creeps me out when all you do is just ask questions. It's like, wow, I feel like I'm being interrogated here. Um, so, in any case, Twitter peeps, hey there, hi there, ho there, how you doing? Oh, and I am so freaking tired of all of this 
damn Russia Gate and Papa Bush and blah 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 blah. I'm tired of it all. Uh, what is this? Hootie doody whaty. They got them big. Oh yeah, I know everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> you gotta watch out for the bog ducks too, because them bog ducks will bog you down. Quack, quack. Okay. <clears throat> Moving along. Over here in uh, Freedoms Network, that wonderful FN site. Thank you once again, Grimmy, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. Kind of, sort of, maybe. I did actually kind of make it on there. Finally. Uh, let's see who else is over here. Uh, looks like a few people were over here. The lovely Estrella is always over here. Bless your heart, Estrella. You always share some really fascinating stuff. Cowboy Tech was also here as well as Grimner and WKDNX QPWS. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Not even. I have trouble with normal words, let alone something like that. Okay, over here on Fakie Book, Nelson has been uh, chit-chatting with me because uh, this is a quote from Barbara Bush. I know, I know, but sometimes, every once in a while, you know, bro even a broken clock is right twice a day. Unless you're going military time, and then it's only once. But, you must read to your children, and you must hug your children, and you must love your children. Your success as a family, our success as a society, depends not on what happens in the White House, but on what happens inside your house. Damn, I could not agree more. I really could not. And maybe, just maybe, if, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if more people started taking responsibility for themselves and for their family and for all this other fun stuff, maybe, just maybe, we wouldn't, you know, there wouldn't be this massive government shit. You think? Well, it's a thought. Okay. Um, oh, and here's another one. I just got to, I got Catherine is here as well. Hey, Catherine. Oh, sweetheart. And please give Jerry a big hug for me. Today is Jerry's birthday. And it's also my baby girl's birthday. Happy birthday, sweetheart. I know you're working right now, but booyah. Happy birthday. And it's also my brother Ed's birthday. So, well, brother-in-law, but he's been married to my sister long enough that he's a brother now. He's, he's earned it. Uh, wow. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. He's put up with her all these years. <laughs> My baby sis. She's the spoiled one in the family. Um, okay, this is another one that I just, I had to do. And I think it's most definitely a well-played dad. Good job. So, <clears throat> son asks his father, Dad, I think I'm old enough to know now. Is there a Santa Claus? You know, not being the fastest thinker in the world, I stalled for a time. And then I responded, okay, I agree that you are old enough, but before I tell you, I have a question for you. You see, the truth is a dangerous gift, and once you know something, you can't unknow it. Once you know the truth about Santa Claus, you will never again understand and relate to him as you do now. So, my question is, are you sure you want to know? Well, the son <clears throat> paused for a moment and then said, yes, I want to know. So dad replied, okay, I'll ter tell you. Yes, there is a Santa Claus. To which the son responded, really? And dad said, yes, really. But he's not an old man with a beard and a red suit. That's just what we tell kids. You see, kids are too young to understand the true nature of Santa Claus, so we explain it to them in a way that they can understand. The truth about Santa Claus is that he's not a person at all. He's an idea. Think of all those presents Santa gave you over the years. I actually bought those myself. I watched you open them. And did it bother me that you didn't thank me? Well, of course not. In fact, it gave me great pleasure. You see, Santa Claus is the idea of giving for the sake of giving, without thought of thanks or acknowledgement. Now, when I saw a woman collapse on the subway last week, I called for help. I knew that she'd never know that it was me who summoned the ambulance. I was being Santa Claus when I did that. 
to which the son responded, oh, and dad went on to say, so now that you know, you're part of it. You have to be Santa Claus too now. That means you can never tell a young kid the secret and you have to help us select Santa presents for them. And most important, you have to look for opportunities to help people. Got it? I think that was an excellent response by dad. And I basically, when my girls asked me, told them roughly the same thing. I just let them know that, you know, Santa Claus, Santa Claus can't really do everything that everybody says Santa Claus can do. Santa has an awful lot of helpers in this world. And you have to make the choice. Are you going to be one of Santa's helpers? Or are you going to be one of those that always says, you know, gets the lump of coal all the time? I prefer being a Santa helper myself. So, that's over there on Fakey Book. And thank you, Catherine. Catherine is over here as well. And let me see. I've done Twitter. I've done Fake Book. I've done FN site. Let's see. Over here on Mines. Mines has been rather slow of late. Not not necessarily, you know, running slow. It's just it doesn't seem like very many people posting on there. Um, looks like there's an awful lot of stuff going on in France, though. Yep. Let's see, did you see that long news story tonight about the riots in France? No, you didn't? Well, that's because the corporate-controlled mainstream media doesn't want you to get any ideas about how to fix your corrupt government. Yeah. Yeah. They are being very silent about that. So, hi there, everybody over there on Minds, and once again, thank you, Barman, for letting everybody know that, uh, yeah, I am live and in poison over here on Real Liberty Media, Channel 10. Um, let's see, do I want to do this one? I, I put a lot of things in my pocket earlier today, and I also, you know, put some things in my pocket the other day before I headed down to my mom's. And I, looking at them now, it's like, I don't know that I necessarily want to go to those. Although I do think I probably ought to let you guys, let's see, is that, have I been to, I need to go and say hey to everybody in the RLM, I'm sure. I haven't been there yet. But, oh, Beetle quit and Frumpy quit. Bummer, bummer. Oh, well, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static, that's reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname, join the chat, and uh, we'll all give you some static right back as you give it to me. That's okay. I can take it. I'm a big girl. I am, well, not in size, but, hmm, yeah. I'm just a little over five foot tall, so, yeah, that's about as big girl as I'm going to get. I may get bigger around, but not taller. In any case, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who is always hearing pleasant voices. Bless your heart, I don't ever get your hearing checked. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know, as well as the lovely Moose Girl, and they will be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball, so be sure to check that out. A good time will be had by all. Trust me. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Kate, I am jealous. I was trying to mentally steal some of your warmth today, and it didn't work. Damn it! Kate was really warm today compared to me. And Moose, Moosey won the Frigid Award today for the cold temperature. Dang, Moose. Dang. Thank you, though, hun, because you gave me something to be thankful for so early in the morning. Thank you, Lord, that I am six degrees warmer than Moosey. <laughs> Sorry, Moose, but uh, got to be thankful for what you can be thankful for, right? All right. Okay, I also see Anti is logged in. Hey, Anti, how you doing, darling? As well as Asmo, the lovely Chloe is also here. And looky there, Chal Sedoni. Cycles is logged in. Hey, Cycles, how you doing, girlfriend? I also see another dose of Chloe, a second E going on there. D underscore C is also logged in, as well as Free Enslaved. Hey there, Free, how you doing, hon? Oh, by the way, congrats, Moosey, on the puppy. CM Free reminded me of that. Yay, Moosey's getting a new puppy. 
I'm here. I don't need any new puppies. I have two puppies, two key cats, and a bunny rabbit. And I have one key cat on my lap right now getting her ears milked because she just really likes it when mommy scratches her ears. And if I don't do that, then she scratches my chin, and I don't like having my chin scratched. <laughs> <laughs> it hoits and it draws blood. I also see IB Don C is logged in. Hey, Don, as well as Ponder Gander. That's Vanny for those of you that don't know. Uh, we got a double dose of the pox going on in the box again, too. Poxified and poxophone, as well as some popple popple pawn sauce. The lovely rain is also logged in, as well as RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Rob Works is here, and I see he fired up that bubbler. Thank you ever so much, Rob. I needed that when I had my little faux pas with, um, yeah, not getting the password changed. Oopsie. <laughs> I also see Romes is here. Hey, Romes, as well as Vinny. Got a double dose going on here. Phantom 2 is also here. Thank you, Phantom, for my intro. Although those on uh, Spreaker are not going to get to hear it because, yeah, I was superhuman. I also see Colfax 101 is here, as well as Cyborg Noodle, and it is Friday, so may you be touched by a cyborgian noodliness. Dakota is also here, as well as Frumpy. Guess what, Frumpy? I'm dressed Frumpy. I still got my house shoes on and everything. Um, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is also logged in, as well as JJ's over there in Scotland. I'll bet it's a little bit bursy over there. Kozu is also logged in as well as Moi 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 and Sock Puppet. Hi Sock, how you doing? And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the former F Bominator. Hey Skittle, hey don't Skittles taste the rainbow? <laughs> that sounds almost naughty, almost. And let's see. Ooh 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 ooh. Let me see if I can get it. Yay! I befriended a duck over in the red pill. Booyah! Let's see, who else is logged in over here on the red pill besides... I see Apostle and Beth Z and Echelon and F. Canelli and Juan Ataco and Katie Troxel and QFTW and Soily. Soily. He's a Soily fella. Mm. I also have... One of my doTERRA lozenges going today because, yeah, different weather, different different pollen, all that fun stuff down at my mom's for a while. Yeah, I kind of sort of got a snuffly nose and uh, a few other things as well. <laughs> mm, can't tell, I snuffling, snuffling just a wee bit. What is that, Grim? Twimming? We's twimming? My phone says Samsung, but I can't figure out what song. Oh, bless her heart. You know, she's she's pissed at somebody because they turned one of her tweets back around on her, and she don't like that too very much. Sorry, hon. But you know what? If you're going to put something out there on the interwebs, you got to be prepared to get something back at you. Oi, 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 oi. Um, okay, every now and then a person with no agenda, no ulterior motive, and no self-interest will take pleasure in helping you succeed, grow, and live your purpose. This person will operate in love, will seek no praise, and will want nothing in return. This person is a gift. Thank you, Truth or UFO, for that one. That is true. That is very true. And sadly, there are too many people out there that just, they want to receive. They don't wish to be on the, on the giving end of that. It really is quite fun to be on the, on the giving side of that, you know. Yeah, try it sometime, for those of you that don't. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to, oh, I suppose I probably ought to tell you. Okay, now, <clears throat> I went down to my mom's. Oh, my God, we had such fun conversations Wednesday evening. We talked about Graham Hancock's, and we talked about um, cathedrals and, and the fancy-schmancy organs in the cathedrals and how you just don't find those kind that kind of um, architecture 
and uh, construction anymore. And then we talked about um, ancient civilizations. And oh, we just had we had a lot of fun. And then we also talked about some of the medications that she's taking. Because we were preparing for the doctor's visit the next morning. Well, Thursday morning, we went to the doctor. And you know that funny feeling you get in your gut when you just know without someone even saying a word I mean you just see them or walk past them and you get that weird feeling in your gut like mm, mm, wow that was not good that that's a nasty juju kind of thing well that's that's the feeling I got when when mom's doctor walked in the room now this is not her normal doctor her normal doctor is on still on maternity leave this is the gal that she no longer goes to because this gal pissed her off. Now, I didn't realize this at the time, but, um, yeah, when I met her, it was like, oh, this is not going to be good. This is not, wow. I mean, she just gave off the condescending vibe, you know, that I know because I have a piece of paper on the wall and how dare you question me. And, you know, the prep was already done. The prep work was already done because they'd, they'd already taken mom's blood pressure and her temperature and her weight and all this other fun stuff. And, um, you know, the gal that was doing all of this fun stuff had said, just before she took mom's blood pressure, by the way, she said, is there any medication that you uh, don't think you need to be taking anymore? And mom looked at me and I said, yeah, her blood pressure meds. To which... Um, this gal said, oh, really? Well, she needs to take those. And then she proceeded to take mom's blood pressure. Well, you know, me and this gal are doing the daggers back and forth at each other. Mom's in between us. And mom is starting to get a little fidgety. And, and rightfully so. I understand that. I mean, it is her health that we're talking about here. And so naturally, her blood pressure was, quote unquote, high to them. 140 over 70. Which technically... If you go by the, the old standards before they started changing shit, technically that's not high. It's a little on the high-ish, but it's still in the normal range for especially a stressful situation like going to the doctor, because going to the doctor is normally a stressful situation for people. Okay, so we get in there. I get to meet the doctor. Ha! She starts explaining stuff to my mother and telling my mother that you do realize that, you know, we had done a um, mental acuity test with you several months back and you realize that you're showing early sign or s slight signs of dementia to which my mom said, you're not telling me anything I don't already know. And then the doctor said, do I smell smoke? And mom pointed at me. <laughs> Oops. And uh, the doctor said, do you smoke around your mother? And I said, no, I do not. You know, secondhand smoke can cause dementia as well or dementia-like symptoms. And I said, so can high blood pressure medicine. And she said, no, it does not. And I said, have you read the inserts? I've read the journals. And she just glared at me for a minute. And then she went to talking to my mom again. And then she started the fear monger and shit. Well, you know... We need to have you on this because, well, it helps to, you know, ensure that you won't have a stroke and, and it's, it's for this and it's for that. And I said, and why do you have her on a diuretic as well? Because didn't you say that, that she was already um, dehydrated and then you put her on a diuretic as well? Why is this? And this doctor is completely ignoring me and looking at my mom and doing the fear mongering and getting scooching her chair a little closer and a little closer. And by the end of it, and it was ultimately my mom's decision, she said, oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, I really wanted to punch her in the face. I really, really, really did. But I had to drive my mom home. <laughs> Son of a... Which I told mom, you know, you don't have to get that prescription filled. Well, you know, she prescribed it for me. Well, now I have backup. Because my brother Fudd is there right now at my mom's. And uh, he has been sending me stuff. And I have been sending him links. And, between, and he went and got mom a blood pressure cuff. And what we are doing now 
is we are going to have mom document her blood pressure every day so that she and they they just to just to check this evening they checked her blood pressure and it was 128 over 47 which actually the bottom number was a little bit low and so he was wanting to know what the lowest dose would be for the blood pressure medicine that she happens to be on. Well, come to find out after I did some snooping that that is the lowest dose that they can put you on. So, now we know that it's making her blood pressure too low. And she's going to start, and they're going out tomorrow to get her a little blood pressure cuff, like what my brother has, because the, the ones that go on the upper arm are too big for mom. She's got skinny little arms, but the wrist ones work fine. So they're going to get her one, and she's going to take her blood pressure every day in order to <clears throat> start documenting. And she's going to write it down on her calendar. I will call her to remind her, take your blood pressure write it on the calendar so that the next time we go in which is in three months because the doctor let her know that you do realize that Medicare will also pay for a wellness check for you once a year which mom has to have a ride to go out to the doctor's office and then they'll just talk about anything that concerns her uh-huh well I let them know that I'm I'm going to be there at that one too and I'll be at the next one as well I will be at every one of her appointments if I need to, to get you guys to cut this shit out. And if mother starts having an issue, you know, we are going to, because we've also got my sister-in-law down there, we're in the same town that mom lives in, who's going to be coming to check on mom. And we may just do our own, because mom's already taking, <clears throat> excuse me, she's already taking St. John's wort. So we're going to try and wean her off of the blood pressure meds and keep track of her blood pressure while she's off of the blood pressure meds. Because the last time when I wasn't there and my sister-in-law wasn't there because my sister-in-law had issues and I couldn't get away, they told her, well, you know, the reason why you're doing so well is because you're on the blood pressure medicine. No. You guys put her on the blood pressure medicine without realizing, which I explained to them. She lost two siblings within a year's time. She almost lost her, her last sibling, and she had three children that were very sick. Your blood pressure is going to be high under those circumstances. All of this happened within a year and a half, two years. So <clears throat> naturally, you're going to have some blood pressure issues because of stress doctor didn't want to hear anything about that to which I also did ask the doctor so you're just medicating her for some a stress related issue you're just going to go ahead and keep medicating her well you know it's your mother's health and I said yeah and she's the only mom I've got biatch I did not say that because my mom was in the room and I didn't want to get slapped in front of strangers <laughs> my mom still scares me she may be a little woman, but she still scares me. But suffice it to say, um, I did not accomplish what I set out to do. But I think between myself and now that I have my, br my eldest brother, Fudd, on board and my sister-in-law on board, I think maybe we can start getting this turned around a little bit and get mom off of this crap and also get her off of the diuretics because she is still technically dehydrated so why do you have a person on diuretics when they're already dehydrated that's just freaking moronic but once again you know they want to keep you coming in gotta have those repeat customers gotta have that income generation going on and get as much out of medicare as they possibly can yeah this is a continuing saga and i will keep you updated but Along these same lines, I just want to let you know, because I heard while um, I was down there with my mother, she had the news going, got to see the whole footage of the funeral and yada yada, blah, 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 blah. But then they were talking about why severe blood pressure drug or why several blood pressure drugs are being recalled. This is from MedicalDaily.com. And apparently it was originally posted on the grapevine. 
But the blood pressure medicine, uh, Lozartan, recalled due to possible cancer risk. Now, I didn't know about this at mom's doctor's appointment, or you can bet your sweet ass she would not be taking this. And as soon as I found this, because, well, my brother gave me, <coughs> excuse me, the technical name or whatever it says on her her new prescription as to, you know, what it is she's taking. And wh that's how we looked up dosage and all that other fun shit. So I, you know, I thought shits and giggles. Let's look this stuff up. Yeah. They're giving my mom something that has links to car carcinogens. So as the article goes, by the way, this is dated November 14th of this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm slacking here. Another blood pressure medication has been recalled in the United States, according to the latest announcement by the Food and Drug Administration, or the, yeah, whatever. They're administering drugs, all right. And the product was found to contain traces of contamination involving a substance linked to cancer. Sandoz, Inc. is, a, is voluntarily recalling one lot of uh, Lozartan potassium hydrochlorothiazide tablets, um... The 25 milligram or 100 to 100 milligram to 25 milligrams to the consumer level. That's according to the statement the company revealed. Now, this lot of medication was numbered yada yada yada. It's actually, I'll just go ahead and give it to you JB8912 and was only distributed on or after October the 8th of 2018. Small amounts of an impurity known as N. Nitrosodithylamine, a little bit, yeah, NDEA. Why do you have to have such big ass frickin' long words? Shit. Well, that was found in that lot. And the substance has been detected in the air, water, certain foods, and industrial processes. Now, the International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified it as a prob probable human carcinogen. And as we know, exposure, exposure to carcinogens can directly or indirectly trigger changes in the body that lead to cancer. But the company noted that there have been no instances of adverse reactions related to the drug as far as they know. Okay, you just, this just came out November the 14th, 2018. A little early, don't you think, to say that you have any adverse reactions? Now, to date, Sandoz Inc. has not received any reports of adverse events related to this lot, they said in a statement, and distributors and retailers that have a product which is being recalled should immediately stop distribution of the identified lot. This is the third blood pressure medication to face recall as of late. Um, another one, um, Irbisartan, Ir Irbisartan. I-R-B-E-S-A-R-T-A-N pills, which is manufactured by Cygen Pharmaceuticals, was recalled just two weeks prior concerning regard of the same kind of contamination. Now, the blood pressure and heart medications that contain this ingredient, Valsartan, have also been under a recall over the past few months. And more than 20 countries were affected by the recall over possible cancer-causing impurity concerns. So when we identify lapses in the quality of drugs and problems with their manufacturing that have the potential to create risk to patients, we're committed to taking swift action to alert the public and help facilitate the removal of the products from the market. That's according to the FDA Commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He said that back in July. Now, as we seek the removal of certain drug products today, our drug shortage team or shortages team is also working hard to ensure patients' therapeutic needs are met in the United States with an adequate supply of unaffected medications. Uh-huh. So what are you going to say to all of those people that do develop some kind of cancer issues? After this, this goes on for a while, but I think we all pretty much know what the hell's going on here. Sons of bitches have been putting this shit out, and now, now, 
there's documentation coming out. And uh, yeah, they're starting to go, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So they're having to recall some of this stuff. But, you know, and I saw this with mom the other day on the news. And I said, mom, do we need to worry about this? Well, the ones that they had listed, the list went so fast. And that was one of the things that I brought up after the doctor had left the room and the nurse that normally deals with mom. I said, there's a recall on these, on several high blood pressure medications is the one that she's taking one of them that's involved in this. And she said, not to her knowledge, not to her knowledge. Well, now to my knowledge, it is, it is. <clears throat> so the mother better stop taking this shit. So there you go, peeps. There's my public service announcement for you. That crap will get you one way or another. If it's not going to cause dementia, it's going to give you cancer. Oh, well, everything does that anymore. But <clears throat> now they've been caught with their hands in the cookie jar. Oh, Captain Ass Holios. So, moving along. Um, oh, Dogecoin is five years old. Yay! Yay! Okay. Back to, and I do have a few others that, bless your heart, Java Doctor sent me. Um, but I don't know if he sent me this or if I saw this one on Twitter. I think I may have seen this one on Twitter. No, no. Nope, now that I think about it, I think Java Doctor put this on my wall over here on realliberty.org, which did I come over here and say hey to everybody? If I didn't, hey everybody over on realliberty.org, and thank you ever so much, Aunt, for everything that you do. You are doing an amazing job. We now have a um, mobile app for realliberty.org. Come on over to realliberty.org, join up, get the mobile app. That way you can keep in touch with all the latest and greatest. And I see Rob Works is over here as well as Grimmy and Cowboy Tech. And Vinny is here as well. And looky there, so is Ant. Yay! So, let me look and see here. I have not been very overachievering on, oh yes, Java Doctor did send that to me. Thank you, Java, for feeding me wonderful, wonderful articles. Because if you are fore, forewarned is forearmed. Now, if I don't know how many, how many people really want to have four arms, but that's beside the point. This is from realpharmacy.com. Illegal cancer-causing chemicals found in nearly 100 shampoo brands. There's going to, I'm going to warn you right now, there is going to be words that I am going to just have one hell of a time with. <laughs> just warning you right now. So, you probably thought that the worst thing your shampoo could do is to burn your eyes. But it turns out that your shampoo could be deadly. The Center for Environmental Health, based in Oakland, California, performed a study on shampoos and soaps and found that at least 98 included a carcinogen known as cocamide diothamoline. Then, yeah. Or... Cocamide DEA. Yeah, we'll just do that. It's a controversial ingredient found in body care products and has landed four personal care manufacturers with a lawsuit in California. Now, the Center for Environmental Health filed the suit after discovering the presence of uh, cocamide DEA, the foam stabilizer and volumizer in shampoos and soaps, and in the state of California, Proposition 65 requires manufacturers to warn consumers over the risks of certain substances. And it is on the list because it's a suspected carcinogen. It was banned in the state last year after a study found it caused cancer in laboratory animals. Just about, you know what causes cancer in laboratory animals? Laboratory scientists. That's what causes cancer in laboratory animals. Now, 
excuse me, some of the products that contain high levels of the illegal chemical are so sold under well-known companies such as Colgate Palmolive, Paul Mitchell, and Prell. And lab tests also found the carcinogen in children's products, such as the store brand Bubble Bath from Kmart and a shampoo slash conditioner from Babies R Us. Oh, they're getting them young, let me tell you. And other store brand products that contain the carcinogen came from Trader Joe's, Walmart, and Kohl's. Unfortunately, manufacturers can put any toxic chemical that they want into shampoos because the FDA allows all sorts of chemicals to be used in these products, including chemicals that are known carcinogens and that contribute to liver failure and nervous system disorders. So how's that for protecting the public health? Yeah, obviously, they don't stop and realize, or maybe they know, but they think nobody else realizes, that the skin is the largest organ of your body. And you absorb everything that go, gets against your skin, you absorb that into your body. But, oh, we don't want you paying attention to that. Now, corporate America really doesn't care about your health unless they can benefit from it. And the full list of 98 products containing the carcinogen is included below in this article. And since the lawsuit was launched last year, only three companies have committed to reformulate their products. Those products that, have, um, that they claim will be reformulated without the carcinogen are highlighted below in green. So I will check those out. And it's very telling of corporate industry morals when the majority of brands and parent companies are aware that their products are hazardous and cause cancer, yet they continue to sell them as is. Apparently, profit is more important to them than the health of their customers. Why be concerned about the health of their customers? Because people breed like rabbits. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works anymore. The population is actually decreasing. Um, so, after all, it, it's safe to say that many of the CEOs and top executives have ties to big pharmaceutical stock. So the fact that their products make people sick is a real win-win for their bank accounts. Now, here is a lovely little recipe for an easy natural shampoo. It's one half cup of coconut milk, two thirds cup of Castile soap, 10 to 15 drops of the essential oil of your choice. I would recommend either eucalyptus or melaleuca or lavender just because those have properties that are more beneficial to the scalp and your hair. Um, two table or teaspoons of olive oil or almond oil and mix all the ingredients in a bottle and sh shake thoroughly. And then just give it a shake before you use it. There you go. Um, let's see. It also has, um, if you don't do the DIY, straight coconut oil pre-shampoo followed by Dr. Bonner's is a great option. So if you don't want to make your own, buy Dr. Bonner's Magic Soap and support um, an incredible company who use their profit to do good in the world, not to mention that their soap is truly amazing. And, um, yeah, not that I necessarily want, because I've never used Dr. Bonner's, so I may have to try it. Um, they've been a lead contributor to pro-GMO labeling campaigns. Okay, I like that. Uh, they use fair trade, organic ingredients, free from animal ingredients, and are certified free from animal testing. Yay! Dr. Bonner's is also a huge supporter and contributor to grassroots and lobbying efforts to recommercialize industrial hemp. Now, depending on your hair type, you may want to rub a little coconut oil into your hair first and then use Dr. Bonner's to wash it out. And by the way, they do note here that they receive absolutely no compensation from Dr. Bonner's. They just love them. So, yay! Um... Apparently, Paul Mollive is one of them that is proposing to take that noxious ingredient out. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Ooh, Lush, L-U-S-H, 
is another one. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Where is the third one? Way down, way, <laughs> way. Ah, Michael Design Works. There's the three that have proposed taking the carcinogenic ingredient out. Wow. Wow. So, um, dun dun dun. Oh, Chloe's got a pair of dice, huh? Cool beans. Oh, there you go, Grim. Yeah, there you go. I saw that earlier on Twitter, and then I didn't click on the link. Because I was scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep that cursor rolling, Grammy. So, let me get this other one shared over here. I will post all of the links over on realliberty.org later. But, you know, I have access to that FN site. And I have these wonderful, easy-to-use memes. And so, therefore, that's what I'm going to do. Is use my little, not memes, but emoticons. So, um, we'll do this one, and where's the little shampooy guy? The little shampooy guy is also on um, realliberty.org, but, um, oh no, I don't want to do that one. I want to do this one. So, thank you. I just got served a cup of coffee. Booyah! I'm so special. Okay, yeah. Well, I drive a short bus. So, uh, where is that? Thank you, Grim. Ocasio-Cortez. Is that how you say that? I have no freaking clue. She just... Can she really... Seriously, I see all of this stuff and I think, really? Is she really that nitwitty? Or are people just having a real good time with her? Because, I mean, I'm having a hard time believing that someone can be that nitwitty and still function on a daily basis. In any case, this is from NewsWars.com, which apparently is a reprint because it came by from InfoWars.com today. Newly selected Socialist Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez responded to a meme shared by Donald Trump Jr. by threatening him with a federal subpoena in a tweet that some are calling a violation of U.S. code. Really? Hmm. On Thursday, Donald Jr. shared a meme on Instagram depicting an imaginary exchange between her and POTUS Trump. And, um... Apparently, it was, she was asking, why are you so afraid of socialist economy? And Trump will still skin responds, because Americans want to walk their dogs, not eat them. <laughs> oh, that's just sick and wrong. So, <clears throat> um, it goes on to say, alongside his InstaShare, Trump Jr. quipped, it's funny because it's true. Well, it's funny whether it's true or not, I think. But, you know, I have a warped sense of humor. Now, the meme evidently triggered, triggered Ocasio-Cortez into telling Donald Jr. it's not a good idea to ridicule a member of Congress who will have subpoena power next month. Oh, really now? Can we say abuse of power? Can we? You have an emotional boo-boo and therefore you're going to use Congress to lash out? See, this is why this kind of stuff just plain doesn't work. Hmm. I have noticed that Junior here has a habit of posting nonsense about me whenever the Mueller investigation heats up. Please keep it coming, Junior. It's definitely very, very large brain idea to troll a member of the body that will have subpoena power in a month. Oh, yeah. That's that's not quite a um, subtle threat. Not quite. Huh. So, and then Kimberly Guilfoyle, 
apparently said, did you just threaten to subpoena someone for criticizing you? As a lawyer and former prosecutor, prosecutor, I find this deeply troubling. And then Candace Owens goes on to say, I just want to be clear. Did a member elect of Congress just threaten a private citizen with a subpoena over a meme? <laughs> this is what we've come to, people. You get a trophy for participating, and if you say something that gives them an emotional butt hurt, they come at you with everything. Overkill. You know, it's like killing a fly with a nuclear warhead. Good job there, sweetheart. So... Apparently, she's catching all kind of shit. Now, according to Jim Hoff at the thegatewaypundit.com, she may have violated federal law by making the threat. Specifically, uh, 42 U.S. Code 1983, the Civil Action for Deprivation of Rights. It appears that she broke federal law by threatening a U.S. citizen with retaliation for snarky tweets writes Hoff, and you can't use the power of the law to get back at people for their Instagram memes. True. According to 42 U.S. Code 1983 Civil Action for Deprivation of Rights, every person who, under color of any statute, ordinance, regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory or the District of Columbia, subjects or causes to be subjected any citizen of the United States or other person within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in any or in an action at law, suit in equity, or other proper proceedings for redress except that in any action brought against a judicial offer for an act or omission taken in such officer's judicial capacity, injunctive relief shall not be granted unless a declaratory decree has violated or declaratory relief was unavailable. For the purpose of this section, any act of Congress applicable exclusively to the District of Columbia shall be considered to be a statute of the District of Columbia. Did any of you, any of you, understand a bit of that? Sounded like an awful lot of legalese gobbledygook. Y'all need to write your codes to where a second grader could understand it. Seriously. Instead of all of this whereases and therefores and gobbledygookies. So, apparently Donald Jr. has not officially responded to Cortez's subpoena threat. Which... <clears throat> I'm thinking this is not a shocker. Uh, uh, you, uh, uh, how dare you, you big old meanie poo poo head? Pretty much, that's what it is. Why, I oughta. Just you wait. I'm gonna. Cause, cause I, I'll have the power. Yeah, sure you will, toots. Sure you will. I okay. I gotta find just the right meme for this one. Yeah, where's the where's the big crybaby one? I'm thinking that's what I need. Is it? There we go. There's the great big crybaby one. Darling, better watch it. Better watch out. Better not cry. Yeah. Sander Claus is looking. He kick your butt. Um, dun, dun. Emoti memes. There you go, Graham. Emoti memes. What is this that you just shared, Miss Moosey? Kids have it easy nowadays. When I was young, I had to walk 10 feet through shag carpet to change the channel. <laughs> oh, yeah? I had to stand by the TV and hold the antenna just right so that the snow would go away on the picture. Let me tell you, I had it rough. We had to dial the phone. Oh, God, I've watched those videos of children trying to dial the phone. They pick up the receiver, then they hang it up, then they start, and they don't do the complete. It's funnier than hell. It really, I'm, I'm sick and wrong. Yes, I know. Bless their hearts. You know, I, I look at older technology, and I go, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> 
<laughs> but I can pick on them because that was just something that I grew up with. So, you know, therefore, I can be a hypocritical butt munch and pick on them. Yes, I can. You know what? Speaking of hypocritical, hypocritical butt munches, <laughs> shall we go here? This is from the Gateway Pundit. Dot com. And it's a lovely San Fran Nan. I use that term lovely quite loosely, by the way. Uh, Pelosi says border walls are immoral. 65 countries have walls and barriers, and so does her backyard. Thank you, Jim Hoff, for writing this. Pre me getting into it. Apparently, House Speaker Designate. Really, are they going to put her there again? What the hell, people? Do you never... In any case, she said on Thursday that she will reject any and all funding for Trump's border wall. The Fox uh, Fox News Congress reporter Chad uh, Pergram asked Pelosi, would you be willing to support some degree of wall funding if you got the permanent bona fide solution on DACA? And Pelosi... Pelosi quickly shot back without skipping a beat. No, it's immoral. Well, then take down your fence. Apparently, a shutdown looms as uh, San Fran Nan rejects Trumple Stilskin's demand for border wall funding. She and Chucky Schumer are set to meet with Trumple Stilskin on Tuesday. Um, According to the Quebec University expert Elizabeth Vallet, There are 65 completed or under construction border walls in the world today. One third of the world's nations have uh, barrier walls or barriers with their neighbors. One third of the world's nations have border walls or barriers with their neighbors. And Pelosi believes this is immoral. Tell that to Israel and Hungary, and Mexico, and Saudi Arabia, and India, and Pakistan, and Spain, and Greece, and Cyprus, and Ireland, etc., 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 etc. Oh, and wait. San Fran Nan has a wall around her backyard at her home in San Francisco. Yeah, there's no hypocrisy here. None. What? So? Ever. Hmm. Well, you know... Do as I say, not as I do. Wow. Yeah, Rob, everything is under the color of, you know, whether it's under the color of their religion, under the color of law, under the color of... They they got this magnificent box of crayons, and I want to know where in the hell they get some of those colors, because I didn't get those in my great big 64-pack. So I'm wanting to know, where in the hell did you get some of these under the color of colors? Damn it. I need some of those in my blankie fort. Just because. You know, it's my blankie fort, and I can be a tyrant in there if I want to. Basically, I'm being a tyrant with myself and my fur babies. but And it really works well for them as well, because, yeah, they just either sit on me or lick me or something like that. And it's like, okay... Okay, whatever. Once in a while they get shooed out, but that's just because... Oh, God. Bubba. Whew, that boy. Yeah. Mm. And occasionally, doozer. Wow. Mm. <laughs> it's not pleasant to be around them from time to time, let me say. Wow. In case you haven't figured that one out yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, San Fran Nan. Bless her heart. She just, I do not think she actually listens to what she says. Or obviously she doesn't realize it. (laughs) Honey, when you say shit like that for everyone else, that also applies to you. You know, just just putting that out there, hon. In any case, let's see. What's going on here? I got to check Twitter. Twitter. Wow. And Gary L is sharing all kind of cool stuff about Escalating evidence of UFOs. Okay, so here's one. You know, seeing as how I'm bitching at medical and all of this other fun stuff, did I? I don't remember where I got this one from. Offhand, but it's from InvestmentWatch. 
or investmentwatchblog.com. Beware. Um... Um, new plan to censor health websites. Uh, apparently, Americans' trust in media is at an all-time low, according to a 2017 survey on trust, or on Trust Media and Democracy One, by the Knight Foundation. 43% uh, of Americans have a negative view of news media, compared to 33% reporting a positive view while 63% believe most news media do not do a good job of separating fact from opinion. So, yeah, which does not surprise me one dang bit. Um, so, 73% believe that the proliferation of fake news on the Internet is a major problem. And only half feel confident that readers can um, readers can get the facts by sorting through bias. However, individual perception about what is true and what actually constitute fake news varies, which, oh yes, it does, from one person to the next. There are no two people that have exactly the same opinion on that one. Now, <clears throat> as reported by Medium 2, um, majority of Americans believe, or Americans believe, people knowingly, um, let's see, the Amish people are the healthiest people in the world. That doesn't make any sense. Apparently they've got, oh, they've got a link to a Mercola. Let me check this one out real quick. People knowingly, see if this is, nope. Nope. Okay, so. Apparently, the Amish people are the healthiest people in the world. And uh, the Amish people are the healthiest people in the world uh, living a plain and simple life. So, what have they really missed outside of their world of calm and peace? Well, no worries about blackouts because they have no electric. And the closer one lives to the Creator, the better their life is. In the Amish world, most can truly call themselves children of God. And uh, if, the more, if the more people in the world ate like the Amish, which is no fluoride, no vaccines, no GMOs or fast food, so what would a body with fresh fruits and vegetables? Um, when one family is in need, the rest go to help. And what's a wonderful world would be if people helped their neighbors like they used to in the old days. So, yep. Okay, I'm thinking this just jumps from one article to another. Investmentwatchblog.com. What the hell? What the hell? Because now I'm going to have to go and click on... Because I wanted to do... The... Uh, where'd it go? Where'd the link go? Oh, there it is. So they had this wonderful lead-in to the Mercola link. What the hell? So, dun 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 dun. Now, according to NewsGuard, the new strategy used to deceive you. Now that I'm actually back to the article, see, isn't live radio wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, all of this, all of this fun stuff about the uh, what actually constitutes fake news. All of this brings me to the topic at hand and the strategy the media is using to restrict your access to the truth from websites like mine, Dr. Mercola. Namely, the latest self-appointed arbiter of the trustworthiness in online media, NewsGuard. Okay, my youngest daughter is sending texts. Um, according to the group's website, NewsGuard uses journalism to fight false news, misinformation, and disinformation. Our trained analysts who are experienced journalists research online new brands to help readers and viewers which one, um, which no one's, okay, viewers know which ones are trying to do legitimate journalism and which are not. 
Our green-red ratings signal if a website is trying to get it right or instead has a hidden agenda or knowingly publishes falsehoods or propaganda. That sounds like a really awesome idea. Unfortunately, it's probably not working real well. And you know what? I'm probably not going to share the uh, investmentwatchblog.yadever because it's a Mercola article. Really? Seriously? In any case, just, just so as you know, Grim, I'm probably not going to put that one in the uh, podcast stuff. The inv I'll do the Mercola link. In any case, currently, the NewsGuard SWAT team is only focusing on U.S.-based media brands, but is planning on expanding to serve the billions of people globally who get news online. In other words, NewsGuard is setting itself up as a self-appointed global arbiter of what information is trustworthy. And that's based on nine credibility and transparency factors not only for information viewed on private electronic devices, but also for information accessible in public libraries and schools. Now, librarians will even provide instructions to patrons on how to use the NewsGuard extension on their personal computers, tablets, and cell phones. Oh, no. I don't think so, honey. I would much rather do my stuttering and stumbling around myself. Thank you very much. Now, once you've installed NewsGuard, you're screwed, but it's a browser plug-in on your computer or cell phone, and the icon rating will appear on all Google and Bing searches. Oh, well, I don't use either one of those. And on articles featured in your social media news feed. Now, the green icon, sites that uh, follow basic standard of accuracy and accountability based on nine criteria, which include full disclosure of possible conflicts of interest, financing, and notable ideological and political positions held by those with significant financial interest in the site. In other words, we're going to vet you. A red icon is sites that do not fulfill NewsGuard's criteria for credibility and transparency. Is this like a like a Snopes, only it's for your own good kind of thing? Now, an orange icon means that it's satire and human sites that mimic real news. The blue icon um, is for sites that primarily host user-generated content. And the gray icon, as yet unrated site. So they haven't rated it or rated it. <laughs> However you want to look at that. I needed a sip. Now these icons are meant to influence readers, instructing them to disregard content with cautionary colors and cautions. Cautionary colors and cautions. Alrighty then. Now, while the warnings may be enough to prevent someone from clicking these links, I believe the true intent will be to bury this content entirely from search results and social media feeds. Ah, attacking on multiple fronts, I see. It's very likely Google and Facebook and Twitter and other platforms will use these ratings to lower the visibility of content, making nonconformist views disappear entirely. Oh, but the rating, it had, it had a gray rating. You know, <clears throat> I saw a meme earlier today. Um, what was it? 2002 or whenever the hell that book came out. Fifty Shades of Gray sold how many million copies of that stupid, disgusting, I, I had people tell me about it. I did not wish to read it. Thank you very much. That was okay. But baby, it's cold outside apparently gives people massive butt hurt. Wow, <laughs> you've come a long way, baby. Oh, yeah. Now, back to this article. <laughs> Sorry, squirrel. So, apparently, news guards own transparency is just a wee bit on the wanting side. Because fake news is certainly a problem. But determining who should have the final word on credibility and what is truth is not a simple one. So who's going to verify the credibility and transparency of the verifiers, i.e. NewsGuard? Well, 
Oh, here we go. I see Snoops. <laughs> It was hard to believe multi-billion dollar companies would rely on the likes of Snopes or Web of Trust to be the guardians of truth and credibility. And in fact, they didn't. Over time, most people using the internet learned to disregard article and website ratings dispensed by either Snopes or Web of Trust. But now enter NewsGuard which for all its promises to vet any and all independent online media for conflicts of interest, credibility, and transparency, apparently does not expect you to put them under the same scrutiny. On NewsGuard's United States Securities and Exchange Commission Form D filed in March of 2018, there is an option for disclosing the size of its revenue. But that box was checked. Decline to disclose. Ah, so are we being hypocrites again? Mm, we have lots of hypocrites this evening, don't we? I know, I can call it because I've been hypocritical in my day. I've learned to recognize it. I at least admit it, though. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be really fun. Ratings. Mm. Now, shouldn't a corporation setting itself up as the judge and validator of the transparency of others be 100% transparent as well? I would think so. NewsGuard also claims the Rule 506B exemption, which among its benefits allows for an unlimited amount of money to be raised from an unlimited number of accredited investors. Ah. Uh, Ah, I see, I see. So see, this is one of those things where the government really doesn't have to do laws or edicts from on high. What they do is they get someone else in the private sector to do their dirty work. And then they can say, what, what, don't look at us. We didn't do it. You guys are policing yourself. Note how well that works. You're policing yourself, you good little citizen, you. Well, apparently, in doing some digging of our own, i.e. Mercola site, aside from internet giants Microsoft and Google, one of the largest monopolies in the world, it appears that NewsGuard is backed by companies that are presently involved or have been in the past in advertising and marketing of pharmaceutical products, cigarettes, and unhealthy junk food to kids. So are we to believe that the profit preferences of such entities will have no influence on NewsGuard's ratings of individuals or organizations and companies that criticize the safety or effectiveness of those products? If this conflict of interest and lack of transparency concerns you, then there's a link here that you can contact NewsGuard and let your voice be heard. Apparently, NewsGuard and Microsoft are also partners in the Defending Democracy program, which is a program aimed at safeguarding electoral processes by working with government. Oh, national security shit, don't you know? According to Microsoft's April 2018 announcement, the Defending Democracy program will work with all stakeholders in democratic countries globally. <laughs> no, thank you. This is to protect campaigns from hacking, increase transparency in political advertising, exploring technological solutions to protect electoral processes, and remediate cyber threats and ward against disinformation campaigns. <clears throat> My truth sayer is your disinformation campaigner. We're just going to have to come to an impasse on this one. Overall, it appears that NewsGuard is just another big business aimed at keeping the chemical, drug, and food industries, as well as the corporate lame-ass propaganda system, a.k.a. mainstream media, intact by discrediting and eliminating unwanted competition, which likely includes yours truly and many others who empower you with information that helps you take control of your health. So, what you need to know about NewsGuard Backer um, Publicis Group, 
Is that how you say that? Apparently, they are a $6 million fund up or startup that was funded in part by Publis Publicis, P-U-B-L-I-C-I-S group. That's the third largest global communications group, according to their website. And it was founded in 1926 by Marcel um, Blustein Blanchin who is a French entrepreneur with the goal of improving the image of advertising and turning it into a real profession. Oh, and look where that's gotten us. Yeah, they figured out how to get you to want things that you don't need and want them so bad that you do these Black Friday sales and get into fights and bust the shit that you went to buy that you don't need. And then get pissed because they're out of the shit that you don't need. In fact, Publish Group's name is derived in part from the French word for advertising. Huh. And it has been manipulating what people think about commercial products for nearly a century. Now, over that century, this advertising and communications firm bought or partnered with targeted advertising avenues, beginning with newspapers, followed by radio, TV, cinema, and the internet. And some of its self-described accomplishments include, the first advertising appeared in 1927. In 1930, Blanchette uh, pioneered the first radio advertising. In 1935, publicists started acquiring cinemas. In 1958, after becoming heavily involved in newspapers and expanding into partnership with major industry like Colgate, he created the Industrial Information Department. In 1972, he entered the technology world. And in 1983, he introduced the concept of global communication driven by marketing. Wow, isn't that just special? Now, with revenue... Um, avenues secured, publicist clients and partners built a global presence that dominated the advertising world, be it tobacco or junk food. They found a way to promote and strengthen big industries. And within the group are four networks serving or four networks serving its clients, including Publicis Health, which bo um, boasts its clients are some of the biggest and most exciting names in health and wellness. Well, you know, there is a difference between a healthcare professional and a medical professional. A healthcare professional actually wishes to help find what is causing you to have these problems with your health, helps you find the core or what is causing the dis-ease and then correcting the problem so that you do not have to stay on what the medical professional wishes to put you on medication. They are a professional at writing out pieces of paper that keep you on medication for the rest of your life, however long or short that may be. Now, apparently, the wallpaper on the publicist's health site shows Lily, Abbott, Roche, Amgen, Genen, Genentech, Celgene, uh, Gilead, Biogen, AstraZeneca, San, uh, Sanofia, or Sanofi, and Bayer, just to name a few of their clients. And their board also consists of a power pack of high-profile individuals with big pharma position backgrounds or affiliations. There are links to each one of these little claims, too, by the way, so you can do your own research. Now, Leo Burnett, the ad company famous for creating the Marlboro Man ad campaigns that made Marlboro the best-selling cigarette in the world and led to the nicotine addiction of millions, okay, millions of people bought into it, but millions of people made the choice to buy into it. Many of whom died from smoking is also part of publicists. Well, you know what, honey? People still need to take it on their own that they are the ones that picked up the habit and they are the ones that continue to do so. Now, if a company, company such as NewsGuard has such atrocious conflicts of interest, they should take their own advice and be transparent about their investors' sources of income. 
How can you trust a group associated with funders known for promoting cigarettes, drugs, and junk food? So while pro-industry advertising worked well for decades, there was still the irksome problem of the fourth estate, which is a term that refers to the press, although the press is not the press anymore. My thinking. The problem was that professional, uh, professional investigative journalists working for magazines, newspapers, broadcast outlets, or outlets would write in-depth exposés outing the truth behind deceptive advertising and countering industry propaganda with science, statistics, and other documented facts. And when a free press with honest reporting based on verifiable facts actually does its job, ineffective or toxic products are driven off the market. So, the answer that industry came up with in the late 20th century to combat truth in journalism was pure and simple. Control the fourth estate with advertising dollars. By partnering with the big guns of media such as the Paley Center for Media and Pub uh, publicist and its industry clients were able to influence and essentially control the press to restrict or virtually eliminate your ability to ever hear the truth on many important issues, especially ones that affect your health. Now the Paley Center, by the way, is composed of every major media in the world, including Microsoft, AOL, CBS, Fox, Tribune Media, and Entertainment. And those are just a handful of the big name media. One of Paley Center's activities is to sponsor an annual global forum for industry leaders. Now NewsGuard, founded by journalist Steve Brill and Gordon uh, Krovitz, is housed in the Paley Center in New York City. And in November of 2015, the chairman of, um, their chairman of New North America, Susan uh, Giannino, joined the Paley Center's Board of Trustees. Additionally, Brills and Krovitz's former business partner in a different venture, Leo Hendry, was a prior trustee and director of the Paley Center adding up to some fairly influential connections with NewsGuard. And, uh, yeah, Publicis and Google are also partners, forming an interlocking triangle with NewsGuard. Publicis and Google joined forces in Condé Nast in, or with Condé Nast in 2014, creating the marketing service La Maison. Um, and the focus on producing engaging content for marketers in the luxury space. Yay! So in the 21st century, industry um, advertorials are looking more like editorial writing in mainstream publications, while news stories increasingly parrot press releases with no probing questions to balance industry perspective. And when news reports like Cheryl Atkins dare to tell the truth, they're bullied, threatened, and or fired to prevent damage to the bottom line. So, simultaneously, another proverbial fly in the ointment of the industry has emerged. The growth of alternative internet media, beginning in the early 1990s. It's easy to imagine how these independent online news sources posed problems for the brand marketing initiative that publicists and similar mass communication corporations had worked so hard to develop for their industry clients. So, consider how distraught those industry giants must have grown over time. As alternative internet media grew into a whole new fourth estate, with sourced analysis and investigative reporting that reflected what the old Fourth Estate used to do. Additionally, this alternative internet media has become a place where news and exchange of opinions are free, and where people all over the world can talk to each other in real time without being controlled by advertising dollars. 
Yeah, these alternative online news sources attract people who want to know more than what they see on TV or in paid subscription magazines and newspapers. They are people who don't take everything at face value and who intelligently question marketing and propaganda tactics. But as more and more independent thinking people gravitate towards alternative journalism in ever-growing numbers, everything these Wall Street corporations have built to influence mainstream media is at stake. Again, you can imagine what they were thinking. They had to come up with a way to stop the wide reach of these new fourth estate internet sites. I think, personally, infiltration is one way. Myself. So, this trend of industry infiltrating the fourth estate, the press, was in many ways the very root and beginning of the fake news problem. So, it's ironic, don't you think? that NewsGuard, fronted by publicists, connected to the Paley Center, is now cashing in on fake news trend that the press itself fostered. Another irony is that NewsGuard's co-founders, Stephen Brill and Gordon Krovitz, have both written in the past or supervised articles about Big Pharma's influence on the healthcare industry. Brill as an award-winning journalist and Krovitz as the publisher of the Pulitzer Prize-winning Wall Street Journal, which is a business-friendly publication. But now, drug industry money is being used to fund the fact-checking Brill and Krovitz. Yeah, and that's a po. It's um, oh, it's fact-checking real of the websites that expose the abuse of the people. Um, who trust health by pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, they mess with this. They mess with us. So apparently NewsGuard is the industry's new ace up its sleeve. Now this this goes on for quite a bit and I gotta tell you, I'm it's it's interesting and there is a video that I'm sure will pretty much explain all of this for you. But I have other things that I need to get to. Um, are you catching ducks with crumbs, cowboy? <laughs> That's kind of crummy, don't you know? Um, it doesn't surprise me one bit that they, they're, there are industries upon industries upon industries upon industries that piggyback upon each other. That's why this, you know, to go off on another tangent, this whole GM thing is going to be a real mess People don't realize all of the side industries that um, are dependent upon GM production for their livelihood. You know, the parts manufacturers, the, the fluids for the new vehicles, uh, those manufacturers, tire manufacturers, um, people that do electronics for those kind of things. This is going to snowball. It really is going to snow. If you're want to, wanting to look to see, you know, where all of this crap or if things are going to hit the fan, yeah, you can pretty much bet on it. There's all kind of snowballs coming down that mountain. And man, when they get together, it's going to be a mess. So in other words, get your ducks in a row. And Vinny, leave my ducks alone because I'm building a duck army. So there. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me that medical dispensaries are pulling shenanigans. It doesn't surprise me that there's somebody else out there because basically everyone pretty much knows that Snopes is a crock of crap. They know that. And so now you need something else. You need a renamed, repurposed, um, you know, kind of like... Um, Oh, what that, what is that nasty ass fake sugar? I can't think of it now. Aspartame. Yeah, they just renamed it. Just renamed it. Still put it in there, just under a different name that people haven't caught on to yet. Captain Assholios. Oh, well. So, yeah. Keep, be, 
be very, very wary of a lot of this stuff. And, you know, even stuff that I tell you, I, if you don't know it already, I read, I, this is dry run stuff for me. I rarely, you know, if I read more than a paragraph prior to going on the news or going live, then yeah, I must have really enjoyed the article. But for the most part, I read the headline and I first, I read the first sentence, if even that much. And then I just throw it in my pocket. And then if it, if it feels right with the flow of the show, then I go with it. If it doesn't, well, I don't go with it which is probably why my pocket is so full. But, <laughs> I, um, ooh, the Ponder Gander is actively capturing duck members. I see how you are. And Grimmy's building a dead duck army. Honey, are you freezing them so you can survive on them? Just curious. Okay. I got, it's time to go and see what happened this date in history over here on PIGazette.com or Hambo and Porcus reign supreme. Just ask them, they tell you. Of course, usually they call out and get a supreme pizza order delivered. So, yeah. But, dun dun dun, there goes my phone again. Over here on the pig, the word of the day is history. It's event sequences which repeat themselves periodically until the relevant lessons are learned and remembered. Obviously, we have to keep repeating those because we're really, really slow learners. In the quotable quotes section, celebrity signs that the end is near. You wake up one morning and discover that you have, that you have put out a Christmas album. Oh, really? Oh, that's that's from Bruce Tinsley. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. In the Tasty Tidbit section, PETA, Newspeak Dictionary Updates. Oh, yes. I saw Grimmy share this the other day. Apparently, PETA has issued a round of Newspeak Dictionary Updates. The update, um, so update your copy at once, lest you fall into thought crime. Like many on the left, the militant moon bats at PETA have studied their Orwell, and here's what the f uh, what they have to say about the narrowing of language in 1984. Don't you see that the whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible, because there will be no words in which to express it. Every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word. With its meaning rigidly defined and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. Already, in the 11th edition of the New Speak Dictionary, we're not far from that point. But the process will still be continuing long after you and I are dead. Every year, fewer and fewer words, and the range of consciousness always a little smaller. Even now, of course, there's no reason or excuse for committing thought crime. It's merely a question of self-discipline, reality control. But in the end, there won't be any need even for that. The revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. Now the whole climate of thought will be different. In fact, there will be no thought, as we understand it now. Orthodoxy means not thinking, not needing to think. So under the heading, you got to be kidding me, complaining about the color of vegetables in a cartoon. Yeah, this is the whole VeggieTales thing and how VeggieTales is so racist. Apparently that Christian cartoon, which, yeah, my kids watched it. My grandkids watched it. I giggled at it. I have a CD that my daughter made for me of VeggieTales songs that I sing occasionally because I'm kind of goofy like that. But apparently VeggieTales is racist because the villains are vegetables of color. I thought every vegetable was a different color. Hmm. And the NFL is racist since most players are black and most coaches and owners are white. 
And white women advance white supremacy when they support POTUS Donald Trump Stilskin. Now, those are just some of the arguments made by the students at the Whiteness Forum. Wow, isn't it ironic? <laughs> that was held at held at uh, Cal State San Marcos on Thursday, and that aimed to take a critical look at whiteness. Yeah, according to the organizers, at least. Yeah, a critical look at whiteness. Is that not, uh, let's see, how would you put that? Racist? Right there? Mmm. I've had just about enough of that. Okay, so moving along, moving along. There's a hell of a long diatribe there. So this date in history, the 7th of December, 1928. Steaming leftist load Noam Chomsky born leaves brown stain on humanity. You know, there are a few things that he said that I actually do agree with. Once again, that's that broken clock syndrome. Also, this date in history, the 7th of December, 1941, America oppresses Japanese into launching sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. In theory, the attack was supposed to knock Uncle Sam out of the war before he got into it. In practice, all it accomplished was majorly pissing Americans off. Yeah, payback is a bitch. But, you know, what's really sad is they knew it was coming. Those in the deepest recesses of gooberment knew it was coming and allowed it to happen. Doesn't that give you a warm and fuzzy feeling? Doesn't for me either. So. Okay. What have you guys got going here? Oh, it looks like they got a hell of a diatribe going in their top story this week as well. So come on over to PIGazette.com. See what Hambo and Porcus are up to. No good, usually. Tell them Grammy sent you. And uh, give a perusal of uh, their top story. And in their tasty tidbits, there are several things that I did not get to. So go on and check those out. Those two guys, they're such, they're such crazy guys. And yeah, if the Thought Police ever saw so, uh yeah it would be guns a blazing most definitely guns a blazing so um oh you going cruising miss kate sweet oh grimmy's gonna have zombie ducks oh that's kind of creepy kind of creepy grim hmm okay so, let me go check Twitter, because I see Twitter's got something going on. Hey, dang, my phone is just going crazy. It's crazy, I tell ya. Okay, um... Dun, dun, dun. Uh, back to my pocket I go. Let's see... Oh, and in case you wanna you wanna check out here's the it's from PJ Media. Here I'll just go ahead and link that that article about Veggie Tales being racist. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know PJ Media. Um I'll just go ahead and put that link in here. Oh, that's true, Grim. That's true. They knew it was coming because they provoked it, which, yes, they did. But, yeah. They also, yeah. So, let me put this PJ Media over here in the effing site as well. Because it really, it's, oh, wow. Wow. I mean, hmm. Yes, some of those songs just really, really, wow. Even to a three-year-old, they just kind of go, are you kidding me? But, yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, my grandchildren went, Grammy, that's a dumb song. You know that, uh, Say Boo? Say Boo! Yeah, I, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> 
with the guy with his pet say boo. Uh, yeah, it's racist, though. I tell you, it's racist. Okay, let's see. What else do I have in here? Um, <laughs> yes, I see flashing going on. You sound ignorant. Ignorant. What is that cowboy tech? Let me check this out. Um, oh, hey. Before independent media, after independent media. Yeah, pretty much. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's lots of faker, faker belly acre, ain't it, cowboy? Okay. Do I want to go to my pocket or do I want to go? You know what? I have not been to UPI for quite a while. How about I go check out UPI.com? Oopie. If I can find it, there it is. There it is. Hmm. Hmm. What? No thanks. Okay, what? <laughs> All righty then. Over here on UPI.com, apparently there is a German town that installs Elvis-themed crossing signals. How cool is that? This German town where Elvis Presley was stationed while serving in the army has immortalized the king by putting his likeness on pedestrian traffic signals. Now, the three, cro um, three crossing signals installed in Elvis Presley Square in Feedberg, Feidberg, Feedberg, feature the image of Elvis standing at a microphone for the red Don't Walk um, and the silhouette of the performer doing his signature dance moves for the green Walk signal. Now, Marion Gotts, who is a local politician, said that the signals received the approval of the local police department and cost the city about $1,027. Wow, you can tell it wasn't in the U.S. because you'd have to add a zero to the end of that. Apparently, Elvis was stationed there for uh, a time while he was serving in the U.S. Army from 1958 to 1960. How fun is that? <laughs> That does look fun, actually. I would almost, well, no, I don't want to go to Germany. Um, oh, great. Good one there, Grim. Okay. Back to... Let's see what else Yuppie has. Um, let's see. <laughs> okay. Um Stunt Man balances chair on top Wow. No thank you. Oh good lord. Gotta check this out. It's in the great state of Florida. This one's for you, Miss Kate. Um, apparently the Florida Highway Patrol captures an escaped lemur on the highway. Now, lemurs, they don't move real fast, do they? I don't think they do. Apparently the uh, Florida Highway Patrol said that troopers had to catch a lemur on the side of the highway when it escaped during a traffic stop. <laughs> Grab it, it's making a break for it. They said that Shane Taylor, 27, was pulled over on Interstate 4 in Seminole County when multiple 911 callers reported him driving erratically and at least three drivers said he struck their vehicle and kept going. Probably because the lemur was trying to drive and yeah, it just wasn't working. Now, troops said that Taylor's trailer was missing both of its right tires causing the rims to drag on the road and uh, shoot off sparks holy crap dude and a video filmed by troopers showed that a lemur escaped from the stop trailer which investigators said also held a wallaby a tortoise a parrot a goat and a sheep 
Oh, this is not sounding good. Apparently, none of the animals were properly secured. How do you, do you have like little lemur seat belts? The footage shows that the troopers uh, working to block the lemur from running into traffic and officials said they eventually were able to capture the animal. Now, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, excuse me, wow, took custody of the animals while Taylor was arrested on charges including DUI, reckless driving, and hit and run. So, apparently there was also a lemur that was stolen from a California zoo and it was found in a hotel. What the hell's the deal with lemurs? What is up with you guys and them little furry critters? Gosh darn, you're crazy. It's crazy, I tell ya. Um, okay. How fast? Yeah, I'll bet you they haven't ever checked to see how fast a lemur is. <laughs> I know sloths move very, very, very slow, and I think lemurs don't move a whole hell of a lot faster. Oh well, let me get this put over on the uh, effing site real quick, because yeah, y'all need to have this over on that effing site. I don't know that I put, I may not have done that, I didn't do Elvis over here, shame on me. I'm slackerin'. Okay, where's the... There it is. We'll do this. <laughs> okay. Back to... Where did I go? There it is. Oopie. Oh, now this just ain't cool. Apparently a man waiting to claim lottery prize wins second jackpot. What the hell, dude? Greedy some bitch. <laughs> um, oh, poor horsey. Okay, let me see. What else? Latest news. Manafort lied about contacts with Trump's administration. Yada, yada, yada. Blah, 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 blah. Ooh, hey, here's one. Yeah, if you just keep scrolling down from the lemur one, apparently there was an overwhelmed boy who crawls away from Queen Elizabeth. He probably thought she was going to try and cook him. A nine-year-old boy became, an over, became so overwhelmed meeting Queen Elizabeth that he dropped to the floor and crawled out of the room. I can't say to blame you, honey. A video was filmed during the Queen's visit to the Coram Children's Charity in London, and it caught the moment that the British monarch met Nathan Grant, nine, and his adoptive parents, David and Carrie Grant. Not that Carrie Grant. It's Carrie with an I-E. Now, the footage shows the boy, apparently starstruck, drop to the ground and crawl to the door. Bye, he shouts as he exits the room, eliciting laughter from the onlookers. Well, I can't say it's a blame you, honey. I think I would have tried to get away from... She's just freaking creepy. That's just all there is to it. Okay. And if you keep scrolling down... Oh, good God. Yeah, Pillsbury unveils a doughboy-themed Christmas sweater. Let it dough, let it dough, let it dough. <laughs> Apparently, they're helping fans of baked goods get into the Christmas spirit by offering two limited-edition ugly Christmas sweaters. And the brand, owned by General Mills, said the sweaters are available in two designs that each feature the Pillsbury Doughboy enjoying the Christmas season. The first sweater, entitled Let It Dough, features the Doughboy and some Pillsbury Crescent Rolls, while the other is dubbed um, It's Lit, which features a mascot with a, decorating a Christmas tree. Now, the ugly Christmas sweaters have become a new tradition in recent years. As people celebrate Christmas, we wanted our doughboy to join in the fun. So see, it's marketing at its finest. Let me tell ya. Let me see if I can find the direct link to that one. Here we go. 
Don't. I know, Grim. Don't. There you go. Yay! It worked. Yay! So, wow. Marketing. <laughs> Although, I I would actually wear one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Just for shits and giggles, you know? Oh, well, I am just about out of time, so I probably ought to just get the heck out of here, seeing as how I'm I'm scrolling and, and searching and searching and scrolling and kind of going, yeah. <laughs> Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on reallibertymedia.com, channel 10. I will be back on Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. But be sure to stick around this evening because Grimner and Moose Girl will be on a little bit later with the Freakers Ball. And trust me, a good time will be had by all. Also, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time is Flash Rooney Dork with the Dork Table here on RealLibertyMedia.com. And I believe that is at Channel 8, Grimmy. I believe it is. Uh, let me scroll and see while I'm over here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Channel 8. Yay, I was, I, re, I be membered. I'm so proud of myself. Also, on Sunday at noon, unless Grimmy decides to get into it a little bit early, um, at noon will be Grimner hopping on the RLM radio, and he's going to be playing some blues while they have a rousing game of trivia that I rarely get any of the answers right or get in there fast enough for. But... It's fun to watch all the smarty acts in there and to attempt once in a while. If it's something really, really obscure, I might get it if I spell it right. But Grimmy will be on playing some tunes on Sunday, noon Eastern time. And directly following Grim will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. And... Once again, quick little reminder, we will be on iHeartRadio. Not real sure how long they're going to keep me around, but hey, what the hey. Um, yeah, along with Hal Anthony and Freaker's Ball. So, hey, we're, it, now I'm hearing that song from the Jeffersons, moving on up. <laughs> Lord, 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 tis the season to be crazy, I think. In any case... Y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your Freaker Friday evening, and I hope you have an absolutely awesome weekend. I plan on doing a lot of baking and making some fudge and that kind of stuff this weekend. Try and get that stuff done so I can get it packaged up and shipped off in time for the holidays. So, I may be hanging out in the chats in between oven switching and that kind of stuff, and then again, I may not. You never know. You never know. But, in the meantime... I really, really hope you all know, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>